Hello, dear precious people in Christ Jesus. Greetings to you all in the mighty name of our beloved Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, the Holy Spirit is coming to inspire our lives in a different mode. We are all here to please God by our Christian lives or by our faith lives. Hallelujah. We are the people to please God by our faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. So my friends, today I was uh, mostly inspired by the revelation knowledge of the Son of God from the book of Exodus, third chapter, and the tenth word. Let me uh, tell about this word to you and uh, explain. In this word, God wants to send Moses unto Pharaoh or into the country of Egypt. And God has ordered Moses to bring the people of Israel or people of God out of Egypt. This is the main revelation knowledge to me. Today, in these days, the situations of the entire families or politics in politics or in any organization or not so good. You know, children are arrogant to the parents. Church is arrogant to the pastors. God's people are arrogant with God. And so many things that we can say like this. We are seeing mostly disobedience in the people's lives. Due to this disobedience to God, the people of God facing afflictions, problems, pressures, and they are crying out to God for delivering them out of these troubles, these problems. And uh, God is always willing to save his people because God loved his people. God do not like any man to be perished. So God continually thinking on his people, whether they are doing good or bad. So when they cry unto God, their cry has reached unto God. That's why God is saying these things, that I have seen their afflictions. 
I have heard about the price. I have known their problems. And I have come to deliver them. <laughs> so God, it's not just Moses is going to ease it. But God is going with him. God needs a man for manifesting his purpose in the people's lives. That is why we should need a man of God in our lives. That man of God shall speak to us, shall reveal about God's purpose and plan on our lives. Like mentors, like apostles, or like spiritual fathers. We need them. We need them in our lives. So, God's purpose is, God's will is to deliver them out of Egypt. For that reason, God has sent Moses into Egypt. And God has visited Moses. God has called Moses twice by name. Moses. Moses. He called Moses. God confirmed his calling in the life of Moses. God visited in the fire, like in that bush, bush was not burning, but there was a fire in that bush. That was the vision. Fire stands for the love of God. So my friend, God visited people in love, in fire. in light. So, God visited Moses, God called Moses. These two things are main ingredients or main two major parts for any man to do ministry or man to follow or woman to follow the Lord. We must obey unto the Lord, unto the Lord's vision, unto the Lord's calling, unto the Lord's vow, Lord's word. We must be careful to observe the things to do. We need to hear. We have to hear the Lord's voice. The Lord's voice. The Lord's voice is so clear to Moses that I will send you into Egypt. I will send you unto the Pharaoh. I will lead you into that nation 
but you have to bring my people back out of Egypt. What is Egypt in our lives? Slavery, weeping, suffering, afflictions, no peace, no freedom. And no happiness, no salvation. They are under pressure. They are under slavery. They are under problems. So we need to bring back. People out of slavery, out of afflictions, out of problems. Egypt stands for this world. Egypt is an evil nation. That's not a nation of God. But people are called as Israel, the nation of God. The nation of God. So my friends, God wants them back out of Egypt. God wants us to live in freedom. God wants us to live in joy. God wants us to live in abundance. God wants us to live in health. God wants us to live in wealth. God wants us to live in peace. They can't get unless they come out of easy. They can't get this all. But they can get when they come out of Egypt. So bringing people back out of Egypt is not a normal thing. And in the meanwhile, God heartens God hardens for us heart. That is why we need to listen to God carefully. And Moses was replying to God, and Moses was had a had a long chat, had a long talk, conversation with God the Almighty. Moses questioned God, asked God many questions. And God replied to Moses, God has clarified, God has given him answers. And filled Moses with the knowledge of God, with the courage of God, with the inspiration of God. And God has made Moses ready to go into Egypt. Hallelujah. So my friends here, I do not like to 
speak a long sermon here, but I would like to mention you mention to you about three things that help Moses to bring his people, or God's people, out of Egypt successfully. Number one, Moses was speaking to God, asking to God that Moses was not a well, a good speaker. He said that I can't speak well. I have a problem, a, a speaking problem, a talking problem. And I can't stand before Pharaoh to speak boldly or fluently. There are some, of course, that's right, God accepted that. But God clarified that. That God can give him the strength, the ability. God qualifies the unqualified for his ministry. If you are unqualified, disqualified for anything in this world, don't worry. God will make you qualify for his purpose. That's why God shall never leave us nor forsake us. And in the book of Exodus 7, chapter verse 1 or 4th chapter verse 10 to 17 speaks that I will assist you with Aaron. Aaron will assist you. Aaron become your prophet. That does means he speaks on behalf of you to follow. And I will make you God to follow. Moses becomes God, became God to follow. And Aaron became a prophet to Moses means Moses was a prophet to Aaron to Pharaoh. Moses was God to Pharaoh. That was the ability that God has given unto Moses. So when Moses was going into Egypt, it means that God is going to deliver his people. <laughs> Symbolic Meaning, symbolic meaning. Actually, Moses was not God. God is different, Moses is different. Moses is different, Aaron is different. But these three are working together. So he will be, you will be glad to receive him and he is glad to receive you. So to speak on behalf of you and to follow, I will help you with your brother Aaron. So Aaron became Moses' assistant. Though Aaron was older than Moses. It doesn't matter. It is an age factor. It is an age factor. It doesn't matter. There is no difference between age. 
in the ministry. God can use anyone at any stage for his purpose. Hallelujah. And secondly, God continued his presence with Moses. God continued his presence with Moses. God's presence is God's spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Power of anointing. Spirit of boldness. Spirit of courage. Hallelujah. To stand before the kings. So God has kept his presence. Means the Holy Spirit. Moses had the leading of the Holy Spirit. Moses had the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. He often led him to follow, led him to people. Hallelujah. And thirdly, God has given Moses the authority and the power to manifest the signs, miracles, wonders on behalf of God. To magnify the power of God before the Pharaoh and before God's people. Hallelujah. That was written in 4th chapter, 17th word and from 8th to 13th words. Many miracles, signs followed with Moses and people believed Moses that was sent by God because of his miracles and signs. Hallelujah. So the same pattern in the New Testament as well that applies in our calling life, call lives, in our ministry life, in our calling life. Moses had a vision. Moses had called a calling. Moses was sent. That was just like an apostolic calling, a prophetic calling, or a, any calling in, in the New Testament for within these five offices. If you are called as an apostle, as, as a prophet, as a teacher, a pastor, or evangelist, These three things must be needed to you. You must have a vision. You must have a calling. And you must send by God. Then you will hear the clear cut voice from the Lord. And you will obey unto God's calling. And you will keep reading, knowing your passion for Christ to bring people back out of this world or Egypt like Moses has brought his, God's people out of Egypt. Now God, Jesus has given us the great commission to go into all the world to preach, to teach and to heal and to 
bring them into the kingdom of heaven. Go into all the world to praise the gospel and teach them all that what I have told you so that they can observe they can follow you follow me through you and he has given us all the authority and the power of the heaven and of the earth to you for casting out the demons for cleansing the lepers for healing the sick people and from bringing back the people of God out of this world out of the lust of the eyes out of the lust of pride out of the lust of flesh out of the tradition of this entire world from the hand of the prince of the air hallelujah Moses has brought God's people out of Egypt so you and me are called by God, by the Lord Jesus to do the same thing here on this earth. Go ye into the villages, towns and cities wherever. I live in India and I do that. And I am asking God to send me into the whole world for, for, for obeying unto the Great Commission. And, and especially I focus on Asia, India, because I, I was born in India, I was, I'm living in India. But we have a global calling to reach out every country with the gospel of Jesus, which helps, which is the power of God. And which helps the people, people's salvation. Bring back people out of Egypt means bring back people out of this world into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. If they believe the gospel of Jesus, they shall be saved. Hallelujah. But remember, God always gives us the ability to speak. God always gives us, keeps his continued presence to the Holy Spirit. And God always gives us the power and the authority. to heal, to deliver, to lead, to bring his people back to God, to God's kingdom. That was the heart of God. That is why God has called me and you. That's what our job to do. How about my friends? Our India is now the largest populated nation with 1.4 billion people. And I am praying, I am asking God, God has led me into so many places of India, but there are still people 
without salvation. There are still 500,000 villages unreached. I am asking God to send me to give me the ability to lead me into the different villages, towns, cities of India, countries of Asia, countries of the world, to reach them out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The end shall come when the gospel reaches to the whole country, whole world. But there are still more than 500,000 villages unreached in India. We ask you to pray with us. We ask you to pray to God that to come or to go with us. It doesn't matter that whether you live in America, in Australia, in Europe, or out of the city, out of the town that where I live, or out of the country, you still can come with us, go with us in the spirit, in prayer, and in partnership. So, my friend, please, please, pray for India and for the people of God. They need the power of God. They need the love of God. They need the salvation of God. Let us go to reach them. Thank you so very much for listening to my, to the Lord's message through me. Honor him, glorify his name, and receive this word. Pray for the nations, pray for India, pray for Asia. And we are praying for the rest of the countries out of this world. And we love you all. Bring back God's people unto God. God is ready to send you unto any kings or any rulers or any countries or any places to speak to them for delivering them out, releasing them from their nations, from their bondages. You and me are needed to do this. And God does likes in you and in me to do this for him, for his kingdom. Please continue to pray for us, India, as we continue continually upholding you regularly in our prayers. Love you all. God bless my friends. Bye-bye.